Hi there, this is Scott Morrison, CTO of Femi Technologies. And today we're gonna to talk about, is Hadoop dead? This has come up a lot in the last couple of years. You know, first it was during the Cloudera Hortonworks merger and everybody was worried about that. And, and next it was MapR and its various difficulties followed by Cloudera now and its struggles and things like that. And in fact, it's true that if you go to Google Trends and you search Hadoop, you're gonna find that it peaked right around 2015 been going downhill since then. But you really need to unpack that because so many factors go into search. Let's start this way. It's important to separate out the very different trajectories of an open source Hadoop you know, distribution and the vendors that are all trying to commercialize it. You know, companies are often really bad proxies for open source success. So let's put the vendors aside and let's look at the tech. So in the tech space, there's two big threats. Number one is container management. Things like Kubernetes, and in fact, the future beyond that, which is really all about serverless. And the second one is cloud storage, which is becoming cheap and ubiquitous and easy to use these days. Let's get one thing straight. Now, Hadoop as a term is a little overloaded. It's really a broad ecosystem, you know, covering, I don't know, 40 or so different projects and that, that more or less kind of sort of work together. But let's focus on the core, which always starts at HDFS, the storage layer. Now, when HDFS first appeared, it was revolutionary. It was a redundant distributed file system that could be built with commodity hardware. Fantastic technology. It's scalable. It's reliable. It's astonishingly good at what it does. I mean, HDFS is not going anywhere soon. Now, in contrast to this, is MapReduce, the execution framework for classic Hadoop. Now, MapReduce is in fact dying. In fact, it should probably be dead already. It's just not right for modern workloads. MapReduce has been largely replaced by Spark. And Spark, of course, is efficient because it all works in memory. But moreover, the programming model is simpler and more flexible in MapReduce. And it taps into a much larger skill set into the developer community. And that is a really, really important thing. Now, one of the great things about Spark is that it's actually not tied to Hadoop. You can use it in other you know, technologies, whether it's Mongo or Cassandra. And as a result, Spark makes a really, really strong separation between the compute and storage layers. This is one of the reasons it's so effective in the cloud, but more on that later. Now, other technologies like Airflow are really important parts of the Hadoop ecosystem. And in fact, where Airflow is really taken over workflow automation, it's a great piece of technology. And in particular, because it knows who its audience is. And this is something that technology too often overlooks. So Airflow has a bright future. The big threat though, in the overall computing space, and for all the tasks and distribution, scheduling and things like that, is Kubernetes. Now, I, I actually come from the microservices world and Kubernetes is ubiquitous. It's everywhere, it's scalable, and it's a lot easier to use than people think. It works astonishingly well. I mean, Kubernetes honestly is taking over. So this one really comes down to background. If you're a web person, you're gonna go in the Kubernetes direction. If you're a data person, you're probably still gonna stay in the Spark world. This is gonna be your perspective and this is going to inform your decision. You've got to align your skill sets to the technology. Now the real dark horse here is serverless and Google has done a great job of that with BigQuery. Now serverless is gonna rule the world. Trust me on this one. The question is just when. There's a lot of pitfalls in the technology still, but those are gonna go away. Now, onto the cloud storage question. Is cloud storage gonna kill HDFS? Prices are dropping fast here, the offerings are elastic, and they're enormously reliable. But there's issues in how they're optimized. So the answer here really depends on your needs. There's a lot of HDFS in the cloud already and it's a lot easier to manage than on-premise iron. Amazon with AWS EMR really led the way here, but a lot of the other vendors are coming out with similar offerings and there's new vendors appearing all the time. But in my mind, the real question is this, will cloud native storage solutions take over, bypassing HDFS entirely? Now here, it's really about preserving investment in tech, but also in your people. I think the future is gonna be hybrid. Hybrid is about a clean separation between on-prem and the cloud with the ability to move data and target workloads to exactly where you need them. Finding that balance, understanding the different optimizations between cloud and on-prem, and use both as necessary. Hybrid is the most interesting place in big data right now. 
So rather than getting distracted by catchphrases like Hadoop is dead, we really should focus on how we can get to hybrid cloud faster because that's the future of big data.